Whitney Houston once said, you better lay low. <laughs> Was she talking about Kevin Aviance? It'll make sense later. Okay, well, just a little bit because honey, it's hot, okay? We all know that summertime is concert season. What do you get when you mix a national heat wave, alcohol, and good music? <laughs> Musty people and problems. The Advocate Channel's David Daniel explains more. Jason Aldean cut short a weekend performance in Hartford, Connecticut. He left the stage early in the show and did not return. The country star says he thinks he suffered a combination of dehydration and heat exhaustion. A representative for Aldean says the performer has recovered and will reschedule the Hartford show. Speaking of the writer's strike, if you've been watching the Advocate Channel, then you've seen us talk about it. But if your brain works anything like mine, you may just need a quick bullet point list of the important updates. Okay, let me explain. One, there are two unions striking at the same time. We have the Writers Guild of America, which has about 11,000 members, okay? And they've been striking since May. We also have SAG-AFTRA, which has 160,000 members, and they joined in on the strike on July 14th. Two, this is the first time in 60 years that both groups have been on strike together, so nearly all productions have stopped. Three, Working in this industry does not mean you're making a lot of money. Trust me on that, honey. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average actor living in Cali makes $27.73 an hour. Four, the studios offered to increase pay minimums, but the union said no, because they also want more from streaming platforms. And five, the union wants protections from AI. SAG-AFTRA says studios are ready to use AI instead of CGI to replace actors in background roles with people who aren't there. In some cases, actors could get scanned, paid for one day, and have their image and likeness used forever. Now that doesn't seem fair. Now you see why they are striking, right? I love you. <laughs> Those are the words Beyonce said to Kevin Aviance at her first Renaissance show in the States. It was such a lovely moment, okay? We learned so much about Kevin and his connection to Queen Bee in the previous episode of my show. But today, we're gonna get to know more about him. And child, let me tell you, Kevin has met and worked with all of the icons, darling. And I mean everyone. I'm talking Janet, inspired my look today, Madonna, and wait for it, the voice herself, yep, Whitney Houston. Yeah, so I'm curious, what led you to pursue, you know, um, doing drag as a career, being a drag queen? Um, I think it was just the powers to be. I think it was because of, I was a performance queen. I wasn't a Broadway queen yet or anything like that. I did perform a lot at the church and theater shows in Richmond, Virginia and stuff like that. But it was more like a, just an expression of my... I didn't know what to do with myself, more likely. You know what I mean? It was kind of like I wasn't femme. I was definitely a masculine kid, you know, very like, you know, boy, you know, but, but not really in yeah. the sense of like in the in the traditional football way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I found myself, um, I found myself um, truly, truly not all these boxes around me, but these speakers, fine. So um, I truly found myself. Um, just kind of like leaning towards drag. Um, didn't really know how to do makeup, didn't know how to do all this, but then I found Club Kid, and that's where a Club Kid was just kind of like this, this very new way of doing drag. It's kind of like without having to have the whole aesthetics of being a woman, you know what I mean? I could be more mm. freak. That thing yeah. was really appealing to me. Um, just putting on anything, basically, and then looking good. You know? and, I, and when I was younger, you know, I, I Go I see about a G string, a person, a thong, and so with that being said, did you have supportive parents for the times? My mom was everything. She was there. Uh, she okay. was everything. She protected me like 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 I was the last one. I mean, I, I, we all felt like that too. So we all got to do what we wanted to do and 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 be good at it and and 
flourish in it. So I was their little like black sheep with the family. No pun intended. It's just I was just that queen. Okay, so Kevin, I have to know: Do you have any type of relationship with RuPaul, good or bad? Um, a relationship with RuPaul, not like best friends or friends like that. We are more like colleagues, I guess. So, um. In the beginning, it was uh, I was a big fan, huge fan, doing the uh, Star Booty days, and uh, that's when she just did Star Star Booty, and it was just like incredible. Um, and uh, yeah, um, <laughs> um, we had some incidences happening, but um, my late dear best friend um, Rupe, uh, Ari Gold, the late Ari Gold, um, who passed away about a couple of years ago. Um, was dear friends to her. And so he made it a point that she and I get along. So we do, you know. Okay. Cause you know, I, I know that. that, that mad, respect, mad respect for him though. Mad respect. Now Whitney has a song called million dollar bill, but miss Houston mm -hmm. didn't make you feel like a million dollar bill one time. No. Please no. tell me that story. So I was, we were in Italy on the end of her My Love Your Love tour, and I had seen the tour like 20 times. I was obsessed with, with um, Whitney, and that album was just really like incredible for me. I love that album. And uh, so my friends, Dolce Gabbana, did all the um, costumes for her, and the guy that, that was her liaison, Justo, was my dear, 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 dear friend. And he is my dear friend. And so he would go to have to go to all the concerts and have to, have to like, you know, make sure she's wearing the white outfit. Because they did all these one pieces and they could put them all together. And she could look like wearing green and pink and all this. Stuff. But for some reason, they all looked well together. You know what I mean? She could just pick whatever she wants. That's what the whole thing was designed for. So, so, but then for some reason, he just had to be there to make sure everything went well. And so I would have to go so I'd travel with him and go see the shows and stuff like that. So I seen her like 20 times or 22 times in that, in that, in that tour. And uh, so the last spot was uh, Milan. And they had a bunch of us come to Milan to host the party for her. It was me, Yolina, Shasta Cola, and uh, one other person. I don't know if one other person. I don't know who the other person was. Anyway, so we go and we she's there at the party. We have the day because you know you're in Italy, Milan. They have the food, dinner, 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 all this food, all this food, food, siesta, the food, more food, 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 and the party. So we're at the party and Whitney comes in and she uh, she's with Bobby and stuff like that. And we're gonna, we're gonna meet her. And I'm so excited, so excited. And she looks at me and she goes, "Him? No." <laughs> but why? Because I got on her nerves. That's why. <laughs> because I was that queen. Come on, girl. Sit in front row, girl. Come on, girl. Hit that note. Hit that note, girl. You know you can sing a song. Yeah, that's right, girl. You can sing your song. You can sing all that. I'll be like that annoying fan. So that's why I got chopped. You were so excited when you met Janet Jackson. You see what I did there? That, that plan worked. Yeah, but, but Janet and I are friends, though. So we're friends. So that's not the first time you're meeting her. So Janet and I are, are she keeps in touch with me. We are, we are good friends. You know what I mean? She's as much as we can. You know what I mean? A yeah. favorite Janet story, favorite Janet memory. I, I, I just went to her concert. Uh, the together. Janet, Janet, Janet uh, they had me come and well, she was leaving me out of town and she was living at Trump Tower at the time. And I had a friend that was living there at the time. And this is doing my all, 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 all for you album. Yeah. And uh, she was doing this to a press junket. And so that morning, it was her birthday and they had me come and sing country to her in her home. Now you also have worked with Madonna before, you know, tell me about that encounter. Madonna, I did, um, Madonna was great. I mean, she's amazing. I did the, uh, just, the, um, uh, the video secret and they were like, okay. So I said, by the way, who's this video for? They're like, did you sign the NDA? I said, yeah. They said it was Madonna. I was like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> and so, so, we kept it quiet because you know you can shoot video and then you get up on the cutting room floor, so you can't talk about stuff. You know oh, what I mean? believe me, I understand. I was but in that, this, this taught me a major lesson how to keep things quiet, and not because of the NDA, yeah. just to keep things quiet because they could literally chop you out of the video and then you're gagging, right? Yep. Yeah. And so I got that they did they they aired the video like on TV that night, and uh, within a couple of weeks. And, Girl, my face came across that screen. My life changed, girl. Changed. <laughs> change, change, change.
Kevin also officially announced his Cunty Ball Tour, and my company is sponsoring it media-wise. This will serve as the unofficial after party for Beyonce's Renaissance Tour. He plans to stop in cities all across the states, such as Dallas, New York, Las Vegas, and yes, even Atlanta. I will be in the building, y'all. So head over to the social media page and see if he's stopping in a city near you. See you tomorrow, girls. <laughs> I just love saying that.